Hello and welcome to another Ninjago video. This video I'm going to be talking about both Season 8 and Season 9. I'm going to be talking about um, the new trailer type things that have been released, everything we know, and from what we kind of what we've seen from the episodes. So, this is going to be a shorter, I'm going to try to make this a short analysis video. Because I don't really like analysis videos, but I feel like there's just so much, that it's, it's kind of cryptic and everything, I kind of have to put it all together and tell you guys what I think it means, and also what, what I think is going to happen, what I can predict from seeing the, the, the shots, which I'm talking about the two new trailers. Also, I'm, I might be talking about the uh, three old trailers as well. Those might be a little mini podcast or something. Um, also, I'm going to be talking about season nine because we have a few uh, little rumors and stuff from that, so, you know. So yeah, um, let's uh, open up the internet. Let's go to YouTube.com, and let's just take a look. Well, let's log out of my sister's account first, because yeah, ignore that. You don't even know those. You don't. You don't even know. Okay. You don't. You don't even know what her name is. Okay. I would log into mine, but now, um, what was I going to? Oh yes, yes, yes. Ninjago. Season eight. Oh. Now, 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 now. So, yeah, the first three episodes of Simon and Garmin are out. I've seen them. They're really awesome. Um, and this this will have some spoilers for them. I'll be talking kind of about them. Um, let's, uh, just, uh, you know. Boom. Do that. And it might actually be really loud. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll turn it down on this spectrum. Really? Okay. Now, um, what I want to talk about especially, it's not these ones, but this one, the first one that I want to talk about. So, what you can see right here, um, um I'm going to turn those off. Um, so, this trailer is called The Quiet One, which they've talked about Mr. E being The Quiet One. I've heard he isn't, but I'm pretty sure he is anyway. Um, and we also, it's been confirmed a few things, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So, let's, uh, let's just uh, continue it. So there's Kilo, Ultraviolet, you know, just normal stuff that we've seen. We've seen a lot in the episodes. We saw that in the episodes. This, now obviously, we kind of knew this already. We could make an inference about it. Obviously, in the last part of episode theory, this is going to be spoilers now. Uh, spoilers territory. So click, click off the video. Um, so, in the last little section of episode three of Sons of Garmadon, Zane saved Mr. E's life. Obviously, he's trying to gain his trust. He's not actually, like, you know, a Sons of Garmadon. He's pretending to be a Sons of Garmadon. And they were going to take him to the big man, which, I mean, it, it's him. Okay. Kilo. But my question is, Mr. E seems like way more powerful, probably a lot smarter as well, um, than Kilo. So why is Kilo? Is Kilo actually at the top, or is Kilo just like, he's just called the big man? Like, because a lot of times in TV shows, they call the leader the big man, you know? So. And then, yeah, he's just, you know. And then we have this. This is cool. Samurai X. I like the Samurai X. And then, it's like, it's strange. I don't know if the Sam Samurai X is actually fighting the ninja right there, or if they just put two scenes together and made it look like it. But, I, what it also reminds me of, if we could go back a little bit, you can see like the rain and like the tower and everything. This reminds me of, um, Star Wars Episode 2 and like Obi-Wan fighting, um, Jingle. And then this is probably from Episode 4 or 5. When the snake jaguar race, what was whatever it was called, um, and then he gets kicked off. This is awesome. That's awesome. Um, so you know, Garbodon, obviously, um, it's coming back in the season. But the quiet one apparently is the greatest villain ever, which by that description makes it sound like the Overlord, doesn't it? This is where we kind of start seeing what this trailer is all about. Um, so I would think, you know, the greatest villain of all time would be the Overlord. If the greatest villain of all time is the quiet one, maybe the quiet one's the Overlord. Hmm? Then we have this thing, which I don't know what it is. It reminds me of the the Subnautica um, concept for the Rock Puncher. I don't know, you guys probably don't know what that is, but, um, 
right there, you can actually hear Mr. E start talking a little bit. So this is also a dragon or a dinosaur, but this, at first I was like, what is that? Sounds a lot like the Overlord, doesn't it? But somebody actually ran it backwards, and apparently it says the trap has been set, which that's that's cool. So he, he just tra uh, set a trap, probably for Zane or maybe one of the other ninjas. And then you got this. So Zane has like some type of spider in him. And then look at this. Doesn't that look like the Overlord? Like it looks like it reminds me of both the original Overlord and the digital Overlord, which uh. Because he got like the, the purple eyes and like the kind of animal body and kind of the same sleek design as the original Overlord, but he also is very digital looking as well, like the digital Overlord. So I thought that was really cool. Also, um, another thing that kind of predicts the Quiet One to be the Overlord is that uh, they said that Zane is the Quiet One's arch nemesis, uh, Mr. E's arch nemesis. So. You know, because obviously Zane and Overlord were like the main two sides of good and evil in Rebooted when the Overlord was still around. So this is awesome. The Overlord is pretty much confirmed coming back. Also, the thing that really actually fully 100% confirms it. Yeah, I think it was Tommy Anderson, one of the, the guys at LEGO and Ninjago, confirmed on Twitter, Mystery is the Overlord. So, you know, I couldn't actually find the tweet, but I, I saw it online and I saw the, it on the Ninjago wiki. They were talking about that, so you know, um, maybe maybe it was somebody else, maybe not Tommy Anderson. I think I checked Tommy Anderson, but um, so mystery, he's the Overlord, the quiet one is mystery, you know, the deal. Um, so that, that's cool. The Overlord's back, but like my the the thing I have that I think is weird. Why is the Overlord trying to bring back Garmin on? Like, is he trying to possess Garmin again, trying to get a new body? Because that's what he did the first time. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get vengeance on Garbanon. Although then, why would he bring him back in his evil form? Because then it's just two evils. Wouldn't the Overlord want it to be good versus evil so he could kind of like show people like evil is better or something? I don't know. It's it's weird. Um, there's probably going to be a reason for it explained in the season. We haven't learned anything yet. Although we have learned a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we learned about the first Majutsu. Probably, okay, this was probably the coolest thing when I was watching those episodes. I, I had a Oh my god, moment right there. And they were talking about how the Oni and the Dragon, their first realm, which now we know another realm, the first realm, that's awesome. And they, the, the Dragon could create, the Oni could destroy. And eventually, two, like the two had a combination, kind of. Um, but like, it wasn't actually like their child. But it was like a child of both sides, basically. Like, it, they weren't biologically related, but it had all the same powers as both of them combined, which was the first Vinjitsu Master. That's awesome. And the first Vinjitsu Master, after, because only a dragon fought over who, like, which side the child is on. Should the child be more so a creator or more so a destroyer? And then the child didn't want, you know, he didn't want to have to choose the side, so he left. And he went to just empty space of nothing where they couldn't get to him. Because they they had, would have to combine their powers to get to him. Well, this wasn't actually confirmed, but it's what I can make out of it. And the the two would have to combine their powers, which they're arch enemies, and they wouldn't do that. So he went over to the dark space of nothing and created Ninjago in there. Created the realm crystal, created the golden weapons, created everything. He did everything. He created the elemental masters to protect himself. He created two of his sons, obviously. He thought he could escape creation and destruction, created Wu with destruction, or Wu with creation and Garmin with destruction. Although, just because you have the power of destruction doesn't mean you're evil. It just means that you that you just have the power to destroy things, basically. The only reason Garmin was evil was because of the great power, which the Overlord created. Because what most likely happened is when the, the first Bench Master created in Jago, since he was a pure being of ultimate, like, power of good because just because you have the power of destruction doesn't mean you're part bad um he was the ultimate power of good so there had to be a balance so the overlord was created and the overlord made the great devour you know the deal and then kind of the overlord making the great devour was and then the great devour possessing government was kind of a hit to the first fujitsu master which is that's kind of interesting you know so 
that kind of answers the question of where the first Ninja Master came from. I mean, we don't know the answer to where the Oni and the Dragon came from, but we know where the first Ninja Master came from, so we got another part of the story. But uh, I'm going to now go on to the next trailer. It's called Ninja Go. You know, you can't really make anything out of the title. But, so this, yeah, stuff we've seen. You know, this is all stuff we've seen. We, we've seen this all. There's Dareth right there. And then, uh, that, that, that was the first thing we have never seen. Okay, I mean, we haven't, like, they're right down the Destiny's Party. Really short scene right there. But they're right down the Destiny's Party. And that, we haven't seen this. You know, and then they're trying to fix it, you know. And then we've seen this before. And this, Cole finds the baby. That's, it's awesome, okay. And this we've seen, this we haven't seen. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, well, a lot of the stuff we've seen, a lot of it we haven't, a lot of it's just casual stuff. You know, nothing really that important. Then we see the baby again. Like, you know. And then... This is a cool scene, I like this scene. So, you, you actually get to see the weekend wipe in season 8, because the weekend wipe isn't in the opening. So that's cool. Um, but, so, the really big important thing of this trailer is, who's the baby? Now, I, at first, thought it was Lloyd, because in this scene, all the ninja are dancing with it, except Lloyd, so maybe it's Lloyd. Also, it makes sense, because of, like, the Lloyd and Harumi love story, and, like, that's always a classic thing, where, like, one of them turns into a baby. So, I thought maybe it was Lloyd, but it's not. Because if, if you look at this scene, Lloyd's right there, and there's the baby. They're in the same scene, so obviously it's not Lloyd. Um, but the other assumption I had was Wu. Now, I also thought maybe it was Garmadon, but also I was like, nah. So, Wu, this is the most likely, I would say, that it's Wu, because Wu, we know Wu's coming back. We know Wu wants to come back. Also... Why would Cole be so happy about the baby? I mean, no, he's trying to be the responsible one now. But he really wants to get Wu back. So that, what if that's why? And then also, there's not going to be like a giant time skip. The baby was a complete newborn before. And now it's old enough to walk and throw things. And not only throw things, but fight by throwing a wrench that's probably like five pounds. And it's a baby. So, it's Wu. Okay. And also, because it would make sense for him to be this age now, because Wu was rapidly aging before. So what if then? Because they, they still have the reversal blade. They can get the reversal blade, fix it once he becomes his normal age again, and then they got their master back, which is awesome. So, yeah, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually mute this, and I will, uh, I'll play this one. Okay. Then I'll play the other one. Well, I talked about the other thing. So the other thing is season nine. Now I know season eight, we haven't even got seven of the episodes yet. But season nine is a big thing right now. Okay. Season nine, a lot of people are saying it might be the last season. I personally don't think so because it's making like a lot of money. And it's probably made at least double what Bionicle made in its entire lifetime. This has been seven years, Bionicle is ten. So, I feel like this is probably going to continue for quite a bit longer. Um, but, um, so, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, this is, okay, so season nine. Season nine, we've seen set images. Um, I can't show them to you because they're kind of still illegal. They're not, no, well, not that way, but they're over a month old now. Um, and I just found out about them, like, a few days ago. I didn't know they existed. But, uh, oh, wait, actually, no, okay, whatever. Um, so the season nine sets, very blurry images, though, um, are available. Um, apparently there's some dragon spinners, which, they're cool. I, I saw them. And, uh, you can look them up. They're pretty neat old burrito. But, uh, we we've seen them. Which means... How far away is season 9? Because normally when they reveal the set images, the show is coming out within the next six months. But if this season has not even started in the US yet, and they already showed the sets 
for a season that's going to come, like, six months from now. Like, what? That doesn't make sense. You know? Um, so, what a lot of people are saying, because this has happened before. Um, back when, um, what was it? Season 4, I think. Tournament Developments. They did Season 4 at the start of 2015. Then in the summer of 2015, they did Season um, 5. Yeah, Possession. Uh, I think. I think that's the two seasons. Um, and so they did two seasons in that year, within six months of each other. Um, originally, what they were planning to do, they were going to do Season 6. And then, what was what were they? They were going to, yeah, they were going to do Season 6. Then, like, a few months after Lego and Jaga movie, then a few months after Hands of Time. Because it was going to be, like, really close together. Um, but then the Lego and Jaga movie got cancelled. Well, not cancelled, but just postponed. It was going to happen a year before it did, to the day. Um, and since it didn't, they didn't want to have that extra few months gap in between um, Skybound and Hands of Time. So they made Day of the Departed. That's why Day of the Departed seems rushed or... Uh, not as good as some other seasons because it was made like multiple months quicker than other seasons were so you know and then they also had to edit a little bit of season seven to make it fit with the other party but um they put i think they put in that extra scene about like cleaning up the museum or something which that scene doesn't actually make any sense shows you that they've made it they had to do that really quick you know so um they uh had kind of a, a setback there. But now what they're planning to do, what most people say they're planning to do, is uh, do season 8 at the start of, of 2018, and then do season 9 in the summer. Makes sense to me, right? I, I think that makes sense. Um, so that's most likely what's going to happen, which is awesome. Um, but I don't think Ninjago will end there, because it, it's just too profitable. People are watching it, people are buying the sets. It's just too profitable to, to not keep making, you know? Um, probably costs a fair bit of money to make, but they easily can make way more. They make a lot of profit. So, I don't think Ninjago will end there. Um, but what do we know about Season 9? So, I know it's, you know, Season 8 hasn't even come out yet. Some of you might not even seen the episodes. But, uh, we're going to talk about Season 9. So, we already know of some type of Golden Samurai. Um, and it seems like Golden Power might be back, you know, like Golden Power from Season 2 and everything, when Lloyd became the Golden Ninja. Seems like that might be happening, but with a Samurai character. Could be Lloyd again. Maybe he becomes the Golden Samurai. Maybe there's another character called Samurai. Maybe it's Nia, and she becomes a Samurai again. Although I kind of feel like that'd be weird, because, you know, she pretty recently became the Master of Water. At least in Ninjago time. It was only like a year and a half ago. In your lifetime, it was still only like two and a half years ago, so, you know. So, I, I kind of feel like they're not just going to make her a samurai again. I mean, she'd still have, obviously, the water powers, but I just feel like it'd be kind of weird um, for her to become a ninja really quick and then just become a samurai again. So, I don't think it's going to be her. I think there's going to be somebody. Who knows? Could Wu do it? Maybe maybe Garmadon, because Garmadon's coming back in this season. I don't know if Garmadon's going to become good in this season, though. Um, and I feel like this is going to have a lot of relation to season um, 8. Uh, also, season nine, we know it's something about the first realm, so maybe the initial go to the first realm. That'd be awesome. We don't know what it looks like; we just know what it is. We don't, know. We, you know. Um, so that's cool. I think these two seasons will have proper connection. Um, another reason I don't think it'll end after season nine is because they just created the new designs. They just created characters like Harumi and Mr. E. Well, Mr. E's the overlord, but like they brought back the overlord, and they're gonna have a bunch of new characters and stuff. That I feel like there's so much they could do with them. Especially Garmadon as well, you know, not just the new designs and everything, but also Garmadon, like, still have him be bad for a season, then he becomes good, and then he's just good for another season, then the show ends. Like, I feel like they want to do more with him, and I hope it doesn't end like Bionicle. But yeah, that's uh, all I have to say for this video. It was kind of a long video, kind of like a podcast video. I didn't intend it to be like that, I just wanted to talk about things that are Ninjago related. But yeah, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, leave a like, comment down below what you're most excited about with either season 8 or 9, or and or maybe which season you're most excited about. I mean, I don't know why you'd be more excited about season 9, because we don't know anything about it, pretty much. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next video. Subscribe.